Hello and welcome to my channel, I am Zodiac Bandit, and today we're going to have some predictions for Critical Role Downfall, the three-part miniseries, or episodes 99 through 101 of Critical Role Campaign 3. But before we get started, I do want to just say there are going to be some potential spoilers, because if I get something right, there might be some spoilers, although I don't think I'm going to be saying too much of anything major. But there are potential spoilers for Campaign 3 of Critical Role, so if you aren't caught up, I recommend clicking off and getting caught up, and then come back and watch this video. Although predictions that's kind of the nature of things so enter at your own peril so before we get started truly into the video i do want to make a correction about what i said in my last video which was i thought this was going to be about us looking through the people of aor's eyes and seeing how they sort of build things and sort of try to do stuff to defeat the gods during the calamity that's what i thought this was going to be about but Someone in my comment section, which was funny because only one person said it, which means a bunch of other people also missed this, that is not the case. And in fact, Brennan Lee Mulligan and Matt Mercer during the announcement video for this actually explained what it's going to be about. And apparently, somehow, I missed it, even though I definitely watched that video before making the other video. So, here's Brennan Lee Mulligan explaining what it's actually about. Oh. <laughs> it will be a tale of tragedy, betrayal, and choices made in an age long past. Downfall is set over a century into the Calamity and follows the story of six divine figures of Exandria and the role they played in the destruction of the flying city of Aeor. So now that we're all on the same page and we all understand that it's going to be six divine figures and their role in the destruction of Aeor, now we can move into my predictions for Downfall, which is funny to say because... Some people noted that that's a very scary title of a video when I talk about Critical Role Downfall. It sets up clickbait that I didn't intend to set up, but it still did. Sorry. <laughs> so starting with my first prediction, and that is sort of the classes some of the players will be taking. Now, I've come up with, in my head, four classes that make sense. Because if we're not watching it through the eyes of Aeorians, who would have been, you know magically inclined through like their own intelligence and stuff like that as opposed to it being given to them divinity wise i would have gone in a different direction but because most of these are divine figures i think that they're first of all not going to be gods i think they're going to be the champion of gods which makes a lot more sense for the champions to be running around doing this while the gods are actually doing other things not to mention players playing gods feels weird unless they're like avatars but i'd rather think that it's going to be champions instead of gods but some of the classes that I think we're going to be likely seeing, and I'm sure most of you are thinking about it already, it's probably going to get a cleric, paladin, we're going to probably see a divine soul sorcerer, and we're likely going to be seeing a warlock. Those are the four that I sort of intrinsically link to being connected to gods. Those make the most sense to me, so I think those are probably what we're going to be getting in some sort of form or fashion. And I don't know which subclasses, with the exception of divine soul sorcerer, that's probably the only one of subclasses I'm going to even name here. But for the most part, I think since we're going to be seeing Champions of Gods, seeing those four makes sense. So there are still two classes of the six, because I predicted four, so there's two left, that I can still predict. And since we're talking about Champions, I figured who is like one of the most well-known Champions of all time? Well, Pervon Sewell counts as one of the most well-known Champions, and he was around during this time. So I think a Ranger, a specifically Beastmaster Ranger, would fit really well, and I think it'd be really cool to see. Not to mention... You know, at this time, the Raven Queen would still be trying to, like, prove herself to be right alongside the other gods, so her sending her champion in makes a lot of sense to me, not to mention, with it all being connected to Aeor and everything like that, the current champion of the Raven Queen is currently locked away in Amalia's Key by Ludinus, and Ludinus is the one showing this whole tale. I think it just fits really well for having Pervon Soul to show up, and I think it'd be really cool and really fun to watch. So, yeah, let's see some Pervon Soul. And for the last class that I think we could see an appearance from, because I'm only going to predict six, that way if I get any wrong, I, you know, I can't make up any more points anywhere else on these fake prediction points. But I decided to sort of think back to Calamity and sort of think about who exactly were people who were against Avalir and who were against like the powerful mageocracy of Avalir. And realistically, the Druids automatically came to mind. So I figured somebody else representing the Wild Mother, being a Druid, makes perfect sense to me especially because the whole science versus nature thing you know manipulating nature to create your own science or letting nature grow on its own makes a lot of sense for someone who's going to be stepping in to take out a very scientific place like aor but that's just me my thought process so 
I don't know. This one's the most up in the air, like the fifth one. I really like the idea of the five that I gave before. This one is just really up in the air, but I think a druid makes a lot of sense. Before we move on to some more story-based predictions, though, I do want to sort of make a guess as to which gods may be sort of interfering or who are going to be the ones the champions are championing. And I think it's easy to start off with, I think Asmodeus is probably going to be one of them, or Asmodeus, depending on how you want to say it. I think Lolth will be one of them as well. I feel like the Wild Mother will be one, the Raven Queen, and those are the four that I'm like the strongest based on. I just feel like those ones are ones that we've had like really deep connections with in the past. So it makes a lot of sense that those ones would be the ones who we're sort of dealing with now. I do think Ayun, you know, the goddess of knowledge, might be another good guess to sort of have involved with all this because of her station with knowledge. And maybe she's like, they're getting a little too ahead of themselves over there in Aeor. So I think those are some pretty good guesses. There are a bunch of other ones that also could fit in. But I think those five are like the strongest bets, in my opinion, of people who would be involved in dealing with this as they are all working together for this brief moment to take out Aeor. So those were the predictions for, like, the classes for the PCs. So, with that out of the way, I can move on to, like, more story-based predictions. And what is the whole story of Downfall, if not Ludinus, showing the Bell's Hells what he thinks will be enough to sway them to join his side? Now, my prediction for this is he is going to show them something that absolutely make the gods look horrific. He's going to make them look really bad. But we already know that the Bell's Hells are sort of kind of iffy on the gods as it is but they're still willing to help them i think lewdness is going to oversee something that happened in this party and thinks it's going to be super minor he's going to see something that happens with these divine figures and be like oh that's truly heinous and horrible but in actuality it's not as bad as he's projecting it to be because he is a very negative outlook on divinity already he was there at the beginning of the calamity he knows what these gods are willing to do realistically he should hate the betrayer gods not necessarily the prime deities but he should hate the betrayer gods but in actuality he hates all of them for some reason which is kind of weird because the prime deities didn't want to just kill everybody that was asmodeus that was his thing his big thing was striking down everything starting a war between the divine uh the the prime deities and sort of having this big uh, brawl to take back the land that he believed was properly theirs right this is their world in his mind so he is overlooking something lewdness is 100 percent overlooking something that will happen within this story that's going to make the gods look a little better in the bell's hell's eyes that is a wild prediction and i have no basis for that and i have no idea what it could be but it is fun to think that Ludinus is trying to sort of show them something that's going to make them look bad, but it actually reinforces their belief in the gods. So now to sort of step back into the direction of looking at the players and some player predictions. I think Brennan Lee Mulligan is 100% willing and is going to pull that trigger. And I think we're going to see a TPK. I think it's going to be brutal. I don't think it's going to be as like emotionally charged as when we saw what happened with the Ring of Brass, but he was so close with the Ring of Brass that I think this time he's aiming for the total party kill, and I think he is 100% willing, and he is going to do it this time. The TPK is happening. And my last prediction for Critical Role Downfall is that Bolo will be revealed as the ultimate villain, and we will all bow down and lose to her because Bolo is the most powerful of all the Aeorians. Oh, you wanted a real final prediction? I think the final prediction that I'll give you guys is we are going to actually learn the fate, the true fate of Bolo. Because as of right now, Bolo's fate is up in the air and uh, I very much want to find out what happened to good old Bolo. Did she die during Calamity, during the beginning of the Calamity? Or did she in fact polymorph and fly away like Brennan Lee Mulligan said she did? And there you have it, my predictions for Critical Role Downfall. I keep wanting to say like EXU Downfall because it's not like your typical thing. But it is just part of Campaign 3, because the Bell's Hells are also seeing it, which is really interesting and really cool. But, kind of kind of a, a brain twister. I know that's not a thing, but you know what I mean. Anyway, those are my predictions for Critical Role Downfall. Let me know some of your predictions in the comment section down below. And I will see you guys on Tuesday for whatever video I make next. Which, uh, I actually already know what video I'll be making next. So, if you want to see it, and I want a bit of a preview as to what it is, I'll say it right now. Next Tuesday, I will be talking about if Chetney Pockapi is a murderous psychopath.
and I'll just leave it there. So I'll see you guys on Tuesday for that. Peace. It's really important to snack. I can't underline enough the importance of snacking. This sandwich is from lunch, and it is 8 p.m. right now. It and smells it's... amazing. <laughs> Sandwiches aside, <laughs> when the light fades, only the deepest darkness remains. Prepare for downfall. Ooh.